This is the island of Grand Bahama. A great place for a holiday. But what I'm really interested in is what's out there in the milky depths. So, this is paradise. The sun, the endless expanse of white sand, the unfathomable Caribbean Sea. And yet, that same sea is full of arch predators, sharks. That is the sea of death. And I'm expected to get up close and personal with some sharks in the open ocean. But before I can do that, I'll have to learn to scuba dive. I'm wearing something called an Arga mask, which covers my whole face and means I can speak underwater. It's really quite remarkable. Goodbye. Next day, it's time for the real thing. And now my gorgeous pouting instructress, Danielle is going to take me out there in the real ocean to do some safety checks and all sorts of other things that ensure I won't drown before the shark eats me. Any sharks? Uh, sharks have been known to hang out in these areas. Is it too late to change my mind? <laughs> yes, it's very much too late. It's now or nothing, man. I put my gear on and leap into what I hope won't be shark-infested waters. Undrowned and uneaten. Woo! It's fantastic. I know you guys see fish all the time, but those blue ones and those yellow ones are just remarkable. <laughs> yeah? You all swam right. right up to my face and spoke to me. Oh, what is it's that? It's something really part. fishy. <laughs> I'm now a qualified diver. That could have attracted a shark, couldn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's a good job we got out, <laughs> otherwise I'd have no leg at all. Right. Back on dry land, I begin to wonder whether a shark could really have detected me that easily. The great thing about Jaws the book is that the author, the late Peter Benchley, gave you a lot of information about how sharks work, and it was all stuff you didn't get in the film. My selfless quest for even greater shark knowledge has brought me to the small, wet, grey and notoriously miserable island of Bimini. Dr. Samuel Gruber is the top shark scientist in the world. He's been studying these creatures for more than 40 years and understands their senses like no one else. What's the thing that really does it for you about sharks? I look at a shark and I see something perfectly honed by millions of years of evolution. Aquatic animals are living in a constant haze. It's like if we were walking around in a fog. Well, you should know about that being from London. I knew that was yeah. coming. Why yeah. did I know that was coming? <laughs> yes, the old pea super. Exactly. If they're going to be super predators, they have to be able to get through that pea soup with other sense organs. Before I get into the water with some sharks, I want Dr. Gruber to show me how their electrical detectors work. Now, you and I have cuddly dogs and cats as pets. He keeps baby lemon sharks. Now, the shark doctor and his assistant, Steve, have brought me out to this special pen where we're going to see just how brilliant these shark's prey detecting sensors are. Sure, uh, what we want to show here today, demonstrate, is the electrical, the phenomenal electrical sense that these guys have. Steve is burying two tubes in the middle of the shark pen. Some smelly fish blood, coloured with pink dye, will be pumped through one. Through the other, a tiny electrical current will be conducted into the water. This electric field is the equivalent of what, say, a small fish would give off. Yeah, the amount of electricity is hesitatingly small, in the order of a billionth or less of a volt per centimetre. That's a B, billionth with a B. First, the fish blood is pumped into the shark pen. The shark's acute sense of smell is immediately stimulated. You see how the sharks go to the pink? Now, turn the electric field on. Suddenly, the lemon sharks turn away from the fish blood and start biting at the area where the electrical current is being transmitted. But where exactly are these receptors on the shark's body? Oh, he's actually going to pick it up. Within moments, the doc expertly calms this frisky lemon shark by putting it into a kind of trance. Take your hand and rub it around that fin. Look at that. I'm holding a shark. <laughs> I'll tell my mates about this down the pub. 
tell having added uh, four tell or five them the feet. Tell them the camera lens makes it look smaller than it is. Yeah, it's actually eight feet long, <laughs> and my hands are enormous. <laughs> To complete my shark senses education, Dr. Gruber is going to take me to a special location. I'm hoping his somewhat unconventional approach will bring me my first encounter with sharks in the wild. En route we see a school of amazing rays. I'd quite like to swim around with those. Instead, the dock takes me to a spot called Triangle Rocks. As I get my diving gear on, there are already plenty of reef sharks zigzagging in front of the boat. Those lemon sharks were tiddlers by comparison. These are six to seven feet long. They could easily take my leg off. Now if they come close, kick those sharks away. With eminent shark scientist Dr. Sam Gruber in charge, I feel immensely reassured. The doc has his students hanging from a line in the water just a few feet from these reef sharks. This is the standard punishment for anyone handing in a late essay. I plunge in and hope the sharks don't confuse my pale knees for some of the bait. I join the line. The doc assures me that the sharks won't bother us. Kick them away! Don't let them come close! You've got to show them who's boss! By now, the sharks are in a real feeding frenzy. Dr. Gruber throws shark bait at us. Kick up! For a laugh. No kidding, stay close together, you're separating. Stay close and kick them. Fortunately, they're only interested in the bait. Gasping in amazement soon empties my tank of all its air. It was truly fantastic. Hundreds well, of them then. swimming around. Fantastic. I can't believe it's possible, swimming around with sharks. 